Greetings class and welcome to HIS 131, History of Western Civilizations 1 at Emmaus Bible College. Uh, definitely look forward to studying and learning with each of you in the next eight weeks uh, and want to just cover a few basic things and welcome you to the course here. So one of the things I, I want to talk about here is just a brief overview of, of what to expect in the next few minutes. And first of all, I, I want to talk about uh, textbooks. Just make sure you've got the right ones and kind of a sense of the value of each one and, and the perspective and, and where it's coming from. We'll talk about reasons to take a, a history course. I don't want to waste your time here, and I want you to be convinced that this is going to be a valuable eight weeks together. So we'll talk about some reasons for that. I want to talk about my goals. I want you to know what my heart is in teaching Western civilization and why I'm really excited about, about learning with you. And then we'll do a brief uh, little conversation at the end about worldview and bias. Just want to make sure that we're all on the same page and understanding the, uh, kind of, for me, what's almost most valuable in the course is understanding how we view the world, view history, and how others do the same, and learning to be able to dialogue about that. So uh, we'll move on to the textbooks. So you notice we've got three primary textbooks for this course. The first one in the middle there is the Western Heritage. It's the fourth edition combined and abridged, so make sure you've got the right one just so the page numbers and everything will line up. Uh, and that's going to provide the, the main source of, of just the basic foundational information for the course text. And then on your right you see uh, a course called History of the Eyes of Faith by Ronald Wells, uh, who used to teach over at Calvin College. Uh, and that is a little bit of a heavier text, a little more philosophical, but it's a great complement to our main textbook and really will, will help to give us a kind of a Christian perspective, a Christian lens uh, that we can view a Western history through. And on the left, we've got a, a historical novel that's going to be due in week four in the shadow of the cathedral. Uh, and that's a text that you'll read through that'll help uh, kind of get you a sense of, of life in the Middle Ages uh, in, in basically Central Europe. Uh, but it's in story form, so hopefully that'll be a fun and enjoyable way for you to, to learn some history this semester. Pretty much any course I teach, I, I, I ask the question, why study history, whether it's Western civilizations, American history, modern history, Latin American history, it doesn't really matter. Uh, as a Christian, I think we should have a vested interest uh, in, in knowing the history uh, of the world. Um, but before we get into the course, I think it's important for us to, to ask that question and, and to consider, because um, I don't want you to feel like you're wasting your time taking a history class at a Bible college. And I don't think you'll be wasting your time at all. Uh, but I just thought it'd be helpful to kind of chat through with you some of the reasons that I think a course like this can be very valuable. One of the first reasons you might consider uh, a history class valuable is some of you might end up on Jeopardy someday, and you will do better in the history category, hopefully, for having taken a college history course. Some of you, uh, you take a history course because you enjoy it, and hopefully that's most or all of you that you are excited about history, uh, but the reality is, and I'm aware, there's maybe some math or science people out there or those who just uh, have never really enjoyed history, never had much fun with it. Uh, and my hope is that you have a much better experience uh, than you maybe have ever had in history course leading up to this one. So we won't be ignorant. And this is an important one for Christians especially. We have a reputation for our ignorance. And it's sometimes I think we're almost proud of how little we know um, as long as we know the Bible. And I'm all for knowing as much of the Bible as we can uh, but we give ourselves a bad name, and, and, and this really fits into the next point, which is so that we can be relevant. And if we are ignorant, we will not be able to be relevant. We will not be taken seriously. I would make an argument uh, that if you want to have a conversation about God's Word, uh, if you want to, to share the Gospel and, and what you believe to be most important in life, one of the best ways, and in some ways the most effective ways, is to connect on things that you have in common with the people. And just about everybody out there who's taken any degree, a college degree, will have had some history. And, and your familiarity with history might just be the, the door that, that opens a, an opportunity for you to have conversations about things that matter even more uh, than uh, maybe the secular history you'll learn in this course. So we can make informed decisions, uh, and I'm just going to read this quote by C.S. Lewis uh, from The Weight of Glory, written back in 1939. He said, Most of all, perhaps, we need intimate knowledge of the past. Not that the past has any magic about it, but because we cannot study the future and yet need something to set against the present to remind us that the basic assumptions have been quite different in different periods. 
and then much would seem, which seems certain to the uneducated is merely temporary fashion. A man who has lived in many places is not likely to be deceived by the local errors of his native village. The scholar has lived in many times and is therefore in some degree immune from the great cataract of nonsense that pours from the press and the microphone of his own age. The reality is with social media and, and media as a whole and, and so much information out and available to us today, there's a lot of misinformation available to us today. And we can be easily deceived if we don't know history. And that's C.S. Lewis's point is that, is that by studying the history of the world, we can keep ourselves from, from, from making bad decisions. And hopefully, some of the things you'll learn this semester uh, will help you to be able to encourage some of your friends to make more informed decisions. So hopefully you pass on some of the things that you've learned along the way. Right, one of the classic answers for why take a history class is so we don't repeat it. And there's been many examples of history of those who didn't learn from history and repeated the same mistakes over and over again. And so hopefully you learned some things this semester not to do. And on the flip side, one of the reasons that we study history is so that we do actually repeat the good things that we see in history. I'm reminded of, of ancient Israel in, in Deuteronomy 6 where the Lord says, These commands I give you today are to be upon your hearts and press them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk upon the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Skipping down to verse 12, he says, Be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Fear the Lord your God. Serve him only and take your oaths in his name. So there's a lot of things that God wants us to actually remember and follow the example of, and hopefully you'll see some of those this semester. And not that I want to sound too cliche, but history is his story uh, for a reason. And so as we're studying the history of, of Greece and Rome and and the Mesopotamian civilizations, we're learning about what God was doing and how he was orchestrating things and how he was intervening. Uh, and so if you want to understand and know God better, history, studying history is a great way uh, because he's revealed to himself in his word, surely, uh, but also uh, through revelation, through his people, and through how he works uh, in a daily basis uh, in each of our lives. History is worth studying because it's God's chosen vehicle for redemption. Right? When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son into the world. Right? Jesus became a part of history. And that's one of the things we'll talk about some this semester. And, and how exciting. Right? If, if we don't value history, then are we not valuing Jesus? I'll add this one here too. Yes, history is God's story, but it's also our story. Right, as we, we look at the history of Western civilization, and hopefully we'll see the impact it has on, on how we view the world today, and we'll start to recognize and see that all the stories that, that we look at are really um, how God is working to reveal himself to each and every one of us. Romans 8.28 tells us, right, we know all things work together for good to those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. But we often forget how Verse 29 is, is the next part. That what is God working all things together for good for in history and in our personal lives? It's to conform us to the image of his son, is what verse 29 says. So as we study history together for over these next eight weeks, uh, hopefully the Lord uses this process and, and us growing together to make us a little bit more uh, like Jesus. So let's talk about goals. Uh, we talked about reasons to study, but what, what I want to accomplish this semester. And my chief goals, I, I'm not going to hide it. First of all, I want to develop more relevant students who simultaneously love others and are steadfast for the truth. So I want each of us to be more trained and more informed and more uh, less ignorant and more ready to be able to share uh, the truth of God's word and, and, and share his love with others. I also want us to enrich our understanding of worldviews, and we'll talk about that, those shortly, but I want us to understand better who we are better who other people are and why they believe what they do and how what they believe impacts the decisions that they've made. Uh, because really, that's, that's what history is. It's the history of people's views of the world. That's what a history text is, is someone's perspective. I want to increase and sharpen our critical thinking skills together. So uh, I want us to be able to think better. I want us to read better. I want us to, to be better historians ourselves when all is said and done. And I want to grow and honor the Lord together. As I said earlier, um, I really want us to, 
to become more like Jesus by the end of our eight weeks together. Uh, 2 Peter 3.18 says us to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and that's what, what I want to do together. If I could shorten these or summarize these goals, I'd say, one, I want us to be more relevant. Two, enrich our, under, our understanding of our own worldviews and the worldviews of others. Improve our critical thinking and grow and honor the Lord together. And I realize that this is probably not the typical goal list for a teacher of a Western Civilizations course. Yes, I want you to learn history. I want you to learn facts and, and figures and, and, and be able to spit some th things back out on a test. The reality is you're going to forget a lot of the information I'm going to give you. Um, so if you develop the skills to be able to think and be historians yourself, if you understand and can empathize and work with people better and be more relevant and grow and honor the Lord together, then I'm going to count this test a success, uh, even if, I hesitate to say it, but even if you forget everything uh, that you learn about the history side of things a week after the class is over. But I trust that won't happen. So let's shift gears. We're, we're getting to the end of the presentation here, but I just wanted to say a couple quick words about bias and worldview. And first of all, when it comes to bias, our natural gut reaction, or at least mine, is usually when I hear the word bias, is I don't want to be accused of being biased. The reality is we're all biased. Bias it doesn't have to have a necessary negative connotation. The reality is the historians who write our textbooks are biased. Ronald Wells is biased towards the Christian perspective. Donald Kagan and, and his friend Steve Osmond who wrote the Western Heritage, they're biased in another direction. Uh, and, and I'm biased as your teacher and you have your own bias, your own perspectives that you're bringing to the course. And so it's helpful for us to be aware of those uh, so that instead of being overly critical, we can actually uh, better understand history, better understand perspective, better understand how God's made each of us to view things. And it should allow, hopefully, better dialogue with people who have a different uh, bias than our own. So I don't want us to be afraid of bias. Uh, and one of the reasons we have a bias, right, we're all biased, is because we all have a worldview. And I'm not going to go into the details. This is not a worldview course, but I thought I would just highlight uh, more or less what it, what it is. Uh, because as you write papers later in the semester, you're going to be asking some, and answering some questions having to do with worldview as a whole. Uh, I'll give you a, a mouthful definition here by James Sire in The Universe Next Door. This is a, it's a worldview commitment, a fundamental orientation of the heart that can be expressed as a story or instead of presuppositions. A presupposition is an assumption which may be true, partially true, or entirely false that we hold consciously or subconsciously, consistently or inconsistently, sin, inconsistently, excuse me, about the basic constitution of reality and that provides the foundation on which we live and move and have our being. I wouldn't expect you to memorize that. Let's simplify a little bit. John Marriott, who was at an Iron Chiron's Iron Conference here at Emmaus Bible College in 2014, he said, worldview is a set of presuppositions about reality that ultimately governs how we think, what we, what we believe, and what we do. Ronald Wells, in History of the Eyes of Faith, calls it a philosophy of life. It's what ought to be. It's what we think ought to happen. And Andrew Hoffecker in a really good work, Revolutions of Worldview, said, uh, worldview is one's basic beliefs and core commitments. So these are the kind of things we want to learn and, and be aware of that we're bringing to the table as we study history um, and, and then hopefully be able to better understand where other people are coming from as well. The big questions that a worldview answers, there's lots of questions and lots of things that a worldview impacts, but I want to keep it simple. For, for us. So the four main questions that a, a worldview answers are, is there a God? And if yes, what is that God or those gods? What are they like? Secondly, who are we? Who are we as human beings? What is our identity? Are we, are we naked apes or are we creatures created in God's image? Why are we here? What's our purpose? And we've got to have purpose in life or life is truly vain, but that's a question. Why are we here? Not anybody will answer it the same way that you will. And where are we going? What happens next uh, after we die? So what about you? Um, what's your worldview? And we'll be wrestling with that this semester. And I thought, honestly, a more important question is, can people tell? You can, we can say that we believe something, but if people can't tell the difference, if they can't see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven, then it doesn't matter what we say we believe. You ask again, what does worldview have to do with a history class? Well, I don't think you're going to be able to understand history particularly well without being aware of your own bias, your own worldview, and that of others. And I trust that this is going to be a really fun semester learning together. And again, by the end of it, may we be more like Jesus, and may other people see uh, us as not ignorant, but relevant and loving and speakers of truth 
uh, who point them ultimately to our Savior, Jesus. Looking forward to learning with you in the next eight weeks. God bless.